Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kim and this is My Yarnatopia, the place where I come out to talk all things yarn, both knitting and crochet. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a collaboration that I'm joining in once again, and that is called Things We're Making Thursday. So grab your cup of whatever, sit back, get your project, and let's talk about what we're going to be crafting for January. Now, I did participate in this craft along last year. Last year was a lot more structured, I think, and I think this year's is really going to be more open and relaxed and allow for each individual's creativity to explode. So I really hope you choose to join in. This is a completely free to join community of crafters and you do not have to have a channel. You just can join along and crochet or knit if you like to knit because I plan on sneaking some knitting in along with us. So for this knit along this year, where last year they would actually choose a pattern and we would all work on it together, this time each month is going to have themes. And for the month of January, the theme is slippers. Now I'm just not going to send you out into the wild without giving you some pattern opportunities. So that is what we're going to do today. We're going to look at some patterns, both knitting and crochet, that are free, that will work great for this craft along, that might entice you to pick up your needles or your hook and join along. So this make along is headed up by Heather. And if you want to join this, and if you do post videos on your channel, all you need to do is enter this hashtag, things we're making Thursday, and then that way people can click on that and they can be able to find your channel. I'm going to have that hashtag down below. So if you're watching this and you want to check out other content creators that may have videos regarding this, just click that little tag and you'll be able to see the other creators who've uploaded content regarding this. You'll also be able to see last year's videos and they're all very great. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to watch last year's videos. You may you may find something interesting that you want to make from there as well. Now, I am recording this on Friday. Going forward, I will try to have these videos up on a Thursday since it is the things we're making Thursday. And I don't plan on posting every Thursday with mine. I'm going to do a first of the month where I'm going to tell you about each month's theme. And then I'm going to do a last of the month or maybe in between of the month and show you how my progress is and then follow up with my finished object and then talking about the next one and also giving you pattern ideas because I think that is also very helpful. While last year's did kind of make it hard to to create something if you did not like the pattern because you kind of felt like you felt like you needed to make what they suggested. This one I think also lends way for people kind of feeling overwhelmed because then you might be thinking well what do I make and maybe you don't feel confident in searching Ravelry or other databases for patterns and I hope that I can be that bridge for you and make that a little bit easier. You may have heard me mention that for 2024, it is going to be the year of the stash for me and the year of the queue. And that means I want to use only my stash that I have. And I also would like to possibly use only patterns selected from ones that I already own. So I don't I really own a lot and I don't need to be buying any more until I make some of these. However, if something pops up that I see that I want to make, I'm not going to like not buy it and make it. Let's just be honest. But when I went to go look at my queue to see how many slippers I've already queued, because I have over 630 things that I've set aside and linked in my Ravelry queue that can be right, found right here on your Ravelry dashboard, I didn't have any slippers. Like, none. Zero. So I had to go pattern searching for myself as well. And when I went down this dark road <laughs> of the depths of patterns... I found quite a few. So I went ahead and added those to my Ravelry queue, and those are the ones I'm going to be sharing with you today, because they're the ones I think that are really cute, quick and easy. So even if you're like me and your January tends to be a little hectic because of the weather, or you're trying to get your Christmas stuff down, you can still find time to squeeze in a project. And I think that's pretty important. <laughs> Because we should be crafting daily because it really does help us relieve our stresses and live a healthier life. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to reveal to you which ones I personally have chosen out of these selected that I'm going to try to get done this month of January. 
So the first one we're going to talk about is Recluse. And this is by Lisa Mooch. And I love her patterns. Love them. I own several of her patterns. And I've actually knit some of her shawls. They are very, very well thought out. I just love these slippers so much. I think they're super adorable. But I think they're going to be so squishy and amazing. It's going to be just like hugs and clouds on your feet. So these are actually made by using two strands of worsted weight yarn held together. She actually uses a merino, 100% merino, which is her yarn, Northbound Knitting Superwash Merino. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm probably going to use just some plain old everyday acrylic. And I'm probably going to use some I Love This yarn because I have a plethora of it and I have a bunch of colors that I just need to use and they're fun and pretty and they're just sitting in a drawer by themselves. So the next pair of slippers that I have chosen to tip your little hooks and needles is the Twin Peak Slippers by Little John Jarn. Now she actually has a YouTube channel and she talks about different patterns and highlights different people on her sh her channel. So if you haven't checked that out, I'm going to link it down below. But these are a pair of crocheted slippers. They originally were made in Knit Picks Brava Worsted, but honestly, I'm probably going to be using acrylic for these as well, just because I want something very hard wearing and I have so much acrylic that I really need to work through it. I did not realize how much acrylic yarn that I had until I started going through through all my yarn and I still have all this in front of me to go through and make sure it's in Ravelry. So like the other ones, these just use a worsted weight yarn. She used about 250 yards, well 200, 250 yards on these and she used a H hook. These look pretty cute even though they're just a very basic made slipper but I like how the top above the foot has that little point to give it a little detail. And so these I thought would be a great, a great make. The next pair that I saw were just adorable. And I think these would be great not only because they're slippers, but because this heart will give you something Valentine's-y to wear by Valentine's Day if you make them in the month of January. And then you're kind of like double dipping because you're also participating in the things you're making Thursday and you're giving yourself a little Valentine's Day love. So it's a win-win. They're called the Heart and Soul Slippers. They are crochet. They're published in my Hobby is Crochet book. They utilize a DK weight yarn, but I'm probably going to use just plain old acrylic on these and do some swatching. And that's that's pretty easy to do. These use 250 to 270 yards of yarn. I love the heart detail and I love the detail right around the cuff of the foot. However, the only reservation I have about slippers, especially crocheted slippers, is how they're going to feel on my feet. I've knit a ton of socks. Well, I've knit like 12 pair of socks and I wear them, but I I'm always scared that crochet stitches because they're so much thicker that I'm going to fill them when I'm walking. So if you've actually crocheted some socks or crocheted some slippers, I would love to know down below, does the stitches bother you in any way and how do they feel on your feet? Because I am really curious. But these are so cute. I really love the striped ones. Someone even utilized a fox pattern instead of the heart. Like I just love these so much. They're so cute, and I had to share them with you. And the patterns that I'm sharing today are all free, and they're all going to be linked down below in the description. I came across these, and they just made me smile. They kind of remind me of, like, something I would see, like, a really cute elf wear. I don't know why. But these are the granny slippers, and they utilize a granny square to make the slipper. And I really love the colors that this person has chosen. This teal color with that very soft pink and the darker pink, I just think is a great combo. It's kind of like a vintage Christmas to me and that's probably why I'm kind of drawn to them but I just really really love these. These are by May Sheb and um, Sheb. I'm probably saying that name wrong. I apologize. I think I've actually got dyslexia. <laughs> My husband mentioned that the other day and it makes a lot of sense because yeah whole different whole different video. So these use 153 to 159 yards, and that is because they are greeny squares, and so you do have the holes in them. This is Bailey, by the way. He will not be still. He's kind of going blind, and <laughs> I just thought I'd hold him to 
calm for him. But these are super cute and I wanted to share these with you as well. And I think they'd be super cute slippers to make. And because they're granny squares, they probably would go so fast. And I love the little detail with a tie around the top of them to make sure that they fit snugly on your foot. I have four more to share with you and then we're going to talk about the ones that I am going to be making for the month of January. Next one I want to talk about is these are really cute unicorn slippers. Oh my goodness, these are adorable. So these are more of a house shoe to me than an actual slipper. But I had to add these in my list because I know there are so many unicorn lovers out there and they're just precious. So these are the Glimmer Sisters Unicorn Slippers. It's a lot to say by Brenda K. B. Anderson. And this is published in We Crochet, which is a Knit Picks publication. And naturally they are using Knit Picks Bravo worsted in these. They utilize a yellow, a pink, a teal, it looks like three or four colors. It says they are super cozy and squishy and they'll transfer you to a magical place. But I just love them. I think they're adorable. It is a worsted weight yarn and they utilize a D hook, which is a 3.25. They do come in sizes 8, 8.5, 9, 9.5, 10, 10.5, and 11, which is kind of sad because like people like me who wear a women's US 13, they would not fit. So your gauge and mileage may vary. I have one more crocheted one to tell you about, and then we're going to talk about the last two knitting ones. So these are the Oma house slippers. When I first started crocheting way back in the day, I remember when this pattern was released and it was a major hit. Everyone was making these. Everyone wanted to make these. These were all all kind of little Pinterest things. It was all you saw for so long. They are adorable. I absolutely love the top of them. They're very much like a little ballet slipper and they're just so cute, especially when they're done in two separate colors like the pictures show here. They actually used Red Heart Super Saver and Vanish Choice. And I think that's honestly why the pattern was such a hit because a lot of crocheters have acrylic yarn. And so when you see a project that's made up in acrylic, you kind of feel like you have more of a chance of making it than if it's something that maybe you don't use that often, like wool. Not saying you cannot use your wool in crochet. I don't know why that's a misconception. It's almost it's almost like a taboo thing sometimes, knitters think, but I'm multi-stitchual, bi-stitchual. I say multi because I also cross-stitch and other things. But any yarn would work, but they just use acrylic in these. But these use also a size K hook. So a worsted Aran weight with a K hook, you know these are going to go uber fast. But they're so, so cute. These are made for adult women sizes 3 to 12. Again, though, I would have to add on some stitches because my feet are so big. So the pattern is a buy pattern if you look on Ravelry. However, there is a link where you can actually get the pattern for free. And that is what I'm going to be posting down below. But these are just so cute and they have been on my what to make list for quite some time. Okay, so now let's talk about the last two knitting ones. And then I'm going to share the ones that I personally want to make for the month of January. And the first one that we're going to talk about is footsies. This is by Quirky Bird Knits. These are knit up in this really gorgeous red yarn. It's Malintosh Vintage. So that is why obviously it caught my eye. I do love Malintosh yarns. I think the color variation in the yarns is just absolutely stunning. The depth that they have. I'm probably not going to make mine in Malintosh because it's a super wash yarn and I like to have some nylon in my yarn or some kind of plastic to kind of give it a little bit more durability and Malintosh is just 100% super wash. These use worsted weight yarn. So again though, acrylic yarn. I love this yarn, Red Heart. All that will work well with these and these use anywhere from 125 to 175 yards according to your foot size. And it says size available, one size fits most, approximately US 8 to 10. So again, this is something when I make these, I'm going to have to make mine outside of the pattern because my size feet never fit any of these things. <laughs> this is probably why I don't have things cued like this. But these are super, super cute and I really wanted to share these with you. I really like how they're made. 
I like how the heel is done. It has this nice little flap on it. And I just think they're a great overall made slipper. Now the last slipper that we're going to talk about today before I reveal the ones I'm making is the Mama Janes. And these are by Michelle Miller. These are just so cute little slippers. They look just like little Mary Jane shoes. And if you're like me and a child from the 80s, you probably had a few pair of Mary Jane shoes. The little strap was just it. The strap it across your little cute socks and wear to school. I just love my Mary Janes. These also use a DK weight yarn and the one that she used originally in the pattern is a merino silk blend but again you can use whatever kind of yarn you want to you just probably need to do like a slight gauge swatch so that way you can make sure you're getting gauged because with these wool based yarns and the patterns made from it most of them are after blocking so that's once that wool relaxes and stretches and grows it's, it's called blooms and so acrylic yarn is not going to do that because it, it doesn't have that capability. So you may have to go up a hook or needle size to get the correct gauge so it fits properly on your foot. But these are really, really cute. I had to share. I love how they have the bottom as garter because it's going to give you more cushion, but it's also going to give you more durability than a stockinette stitch. I love a stockinette stitch but it doesn't have the strength because it's not as bunched up as like a garter okay, stick. So I have given you so many options to choose from. I know it's going to be very hard, but I'm hoping in doing that, that I have encouraged you or enticed you, enabled you, however you want to look at it, to join in on this make along. It is completely free. You do not have to have a channel to join. If you want to have your pictures shown of your finished object, you are more than welcome to shoot me an email or send me a photo of them via Instagram or Facebook or email and I will make sure to add that in my video when I post my finished project with your name and I will tag your YouTube YouTube name. So let me know your little at YouTube so I can include that with your photos. So the ones that I decided that I'm going to make are a knitting and a crochet one. That's my goals. The knitting one I would like to make the recluse slipper by Lisa just because I do love her patterns and that is a garter stitch slipper that has no seaming whatsoever. So maybe you're wanting to do your first knitting project. We can do this together. I can actually record my starting process with you so you can see how to do that. And then if you have any questions since I'm making it with you, I'll be more than happy to answer those. I am pretty excited about these because I just think they're going to be so fast and so cute to make. I'm probably going to do mine two at a time. I'm not sure. I have to think about that. But that is my knitting ones that I'm going to make. Now for the crochet ones I'm going to make. I'm going to be making the Heart and Soul Slippers by Kinga Edmund. Erdman. I am horrible at pronouncing names. I love that little heart on them and the fact that I can make a slipper and it would count for this month's craft along and still give me a February object to wear next month is a double win for me. So I am all about that. I am probably not going to be doing mine in a DK weight yarn. I don't know. I may. I have some DK acrylic somewhere. I'm probably in one of these totes in front of me. So I may try to do that. We'll just have to see. But I think I'm going to start with the knitting ones just because I want some slippers because my feet are cold out here. So I would love to know if you plan on joining this make along. If so, if one of the patterns that I talked about today with you are going to be what you're choosing to make. And if you are choosing one of the patterns that I talked about today that will be linked down below, I really hope you leave me a comment and let me know because I'm excited to get to crafting with you this year. 2024 is going to be all about the yarn and all about the crafts and I'm so ready to dive in with you. So until the next video, you can find me here if you want to catch some more of my content. If not, I will see you later.